Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Technique Tuesday. Today, we are going to use resin to cover the tops of our paint pour earrings that we made last week. So let's take a look at what we're going to make here. This is one of the paint pour earrings that we did last week that I have now covered with resin. So is this. This was done at the same time. I'd like for you to notice the color differences on this one versus this one. And I'll come back to that in a little bit as to why there is that, that change in color. So let's start out with what we're going to use here. You don't have to use paint pour earrings. You can use any type of earrings that you want to put resin on. This just happens to be um, from a conversation we had last week where I showed you that this half was resin and this half was liquid glass. So we will cover liquid glass in another tutorial, but today we're going to focus on resin. There are so many out there. The best suggestion I have is make sure that when you buy the resin, you buy the light, the UV light that goes with that particular brand. Um, there are various speeds and, and um, strengths of lights, but they are designed to go with a specific brand of resin. Today, I'm actually using Mr. Resin. It's a hard type. It dries crystal clear, uh, low viscosity, which means it doesn't flow very quickly, which is kind of a good thing because you've got some time to make some changes. And then this is the little light that comes with the package that I bought on Amazon. Now, if you're doing something bigger than an earring, this little light is not going to work. You're going to want something bigger. I have no affiliation with Mr. Resin. This just happens to be one that I came across that I really like. So we need resin. We need something to put it on. We need a couple toothpicks. I also like this tool. came from the $1.25 store. I got a couple popsicle sticks. You want some baby wipes to clean up, make sure you haven't made a mess. And let's get started. So let me move these completed ones out of the way and take a look at some of the ones we did last week. So these were off of the paint pour, so were these. Now, what you will want to do is sand down any overflow that happened on the back and or the sides. If you sand down the sides to the point where you can only see the wood underneath, then I would suggest going back with something like a furniture marker and touch it up around the edges. On the back, if you want to paint it a complementary color, that's great. Uh, if you want to leave it just natural wood, that's great too. So clean up the edges, paint the back, like these are right here, these little studs. And then we will resin the top. Now, a couple key things with resin. Do not shake the bottle. Your worst enemy is bubbles. So if you accidentally drop the bottle on the floor, no, I've never done that, uh, except, well, yeah, today. Uh, let it sit and leave it alone. Don't start to use it immediately. Let all those bubbles come up and dissipate in the bottle. So try not to drop the bottle. If you do, let it sit for a minute before you use it. So bubbles are not your friend. Bubbles are for the bathtub. We've also got our wood blanks and our toothpicks. What we're going to use the toothpicks for is to gently move the resin to the very edge of your blank. You want thin layers of resin. You can build up layers, but don't start out with a thick layer. Do a very thin layer, cure it, come back, put another layer on it. For the most part, resin is self-leveling, but if you have something at a severe angle, 
it doesn't have a hope. So you do want something as flat as you can possibly get and a, a surface that's disposable. This particular resin does have an odor, but it's a very light odor and it is not nearly as awful as a two-part resin. That stuff will knock you out of the room. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take the lid off of my resin. I'm going to start in the middle of my design and then I'm going to use my toothpick to work my way out. Remember we want thin layers so I'm not going to go overboard. I can always add to it. Make sure you put the lid back on it and then we're going to take our toothpick oops we'll take one of our toothpicks and we're going to punch it through the cardboard to hold it still and then we're going to take the other one and we're going to gently slide it you don't want it going over the edge but you do want it going right up to the edge a lot of resins will have a little bit of uh, shrinkage where once they're cured they will pull away from edges so we want to try to get as close to that edge without going over as we possibly can so once we get to a place where we need to turn it I'm just going to pivot it off of my um, toothpick there how many of you just had the uh, friends TV show reference just blast into your head yep pivot pivot okay sorry bad joke so I'm just gonna keep working my way around here we're not in a hurry because it's not going to cure until we put it under the UV light so just keep working all the way around we want to get right up to the edge of the hole we want to try to avoid it going into the hole. If it does, it does. We have a way to clean that up, but we want to try to avoid it. But we want to go all the way around the hole. And we'll go to the other side. Remember, bubbles are not your friend. It's not bath time. So we want to just gently pull this. We're not trying to stir it, mix it, anything like that. Now these paint pour earrings, these have been curing for a week. You don't need to let them cure that long. That's just how long these ones happen to be. But you do want whatever's underneath your resin to be completely dry. Alright, so I think, I think we are there. I'm going to give it just a few seconds I want to see if any little ugly bubbles come up if they do I'm going to use my toothpick and I'm going to gently pop them okay now we take our toothpick out carefully usually I twist them to get them out I don't know why it just seems to work better and then we're going to put our light source over it I'm going to turn it on and then we all get to listen to the soundtrack to Jeopardy in our heads. And we wait and we wait. And it takes just a few more minutes or seconds, sorry. We're measured in seconds, not minutes. And if I polish on, I could put it underneath there. I don't. So let's, it'll turn itself off. This particular light works off of USB power and the little legs, oh this is cute, watch this, little legs fold in so it's actually pretty pretty easy, pretty compact and there's the lights. So let's take a look at this. Now one way we can test to see how our resin has done is see if the hole is cured. Look at that beautiful nice surface on there. I'm going to do it one more time 
So you're going to have to wait with me for another 45 seconds and listen to my bad jokes. Actually, while we are waiting on that, let me show you how we would do the studs. So, one of the studs we poured from last week. I decided I didn't want to clean up the edges, partly because I'm lazy and partly because I liked it. Then you are going to paint in a complementary color. Then use something like Gorilla Glue or Super Glue or Loctite. You want some type of glue to glue your post down. Then you're going to resin right on top of it and that's going to lock everything in for you. So that's a quick easy way to make some studs. But make sure you resin the front first before you resin the back. Once the front's done then take care of the back. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to resin with something that's sitting on a post. It can be done if you forgot. Just take a piece of styrofoam and push this down in there. My recommendation though is resin the front, then work on the back. Okay, look at that. I killed 45 seconds. So let's take a look and see how we're doing. Ooh, that looks pretty. I am going to put one more layer on it because remember we said we're going to build this up nice thin layers. Now I purchased the Mr. Resin kit off of Amazon and I've had this bottle gosh probably a year now and I still haven't run out. If you're making bigger items of course you're going to go through it faster but just doing earrings. Nope, still got it. Again, I want to protect that hole if I can. And just spread this out. Not making waves, not making bubbles, but coming right to the edge. go around the top here. If it sounds like my voice is croaking on you, it is. I swear it's allergy season year round here. If it's not one thing, it's another. I think I must be allergic to snow because I have allergies in the winter too. Go figure. Okay, Got to take the toothpick out before I can put my light source on there. Otherwise it's too tall. You could break the toothpick off if you wanted. Okay, so let's put that on there. While that's curing, let's talk about another thing. It's a pigment powder. Found this on Amazon. It's called Chameleon Powder. Comes in these little containers. And this one changes color between the purple, red, and orange spectrum. This one, silver, blue, purple. This one is golden, orange, red. And there's one hiding in the box. It is golden, green, and yellow. And what I did, remember I showed you that first one and I said, look how it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. I used the golden, orange, and red. And we'll do this real quick. Let me turn this on for a second time. On the final layer, I will do three cure times just to be sure. So I took a dry paintbrush, I dipped it in my chameleon powder, just a light dip, and then I painted it by painting, I mean just kind of gently brushed a very thin layer across the top of this before I put my resin on. And it leaves behind a a colored glitter sparkle without being obnoxious. Can you see the color just barely on there? I mean I just gently dabbed that on there but then once you put the resin on it amplifies those colors. So I thought this compared to that Yes, it's shiny because of the resin, but you can also see how it brought out some of the golds in that coloring. 
Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so one more time. Then once you have cured the front, if you want to do the back, do the back after that, then I'd say leave it for 24 hours. Just leave it alone and then put your findings on it. Resin is very uh, resilient, but it's it's it does have its limits. So if you drop something, you, you could run the risk of cracking the resin. I think that's far-fetched, but it could happen. So we just want it to be as strong and tough as possible. While that's curing, I'll show you some of the other designs that we did last week. If you're interested in how we did the paint pour, we've got our video from last week from Technique Tuesday that will show you exactly how to do that. Okay. Ooh, look at that. Now, if my hole has sealed up, I do like to use the end of this and just gently kind of poke it through. You don't want to stab it and, and crack the resin. So just kind of work it, twist it slowly. Helps having a piece of cardboard underneath. That way you're not drilling through your desk. Now you also see that a little bit of uncured resin came out of that. So once I get this hole open, I would put it back underneath my light one more time just to catch any loose resin that's in there. So now let's go back to my stud. Glue's dried and we are going to, whoops, see all those little bubbles coming out? We're going to put a little bit of resin right around the post, the hearing post. Then we're going to take our toothpick, pull it out to the edges, and then cure it. Again, I'd probably do it two, definitely two, maybe three times. It's not going to hurt it. And just pull it all the way out to the edge. But that will help secure your post. Okay, so this one's good. This one will get cured. That one's good. Now it's just time to leave it. Ooh, I gotta finish that one up. I don't think y'all need to watch me do that one more time. I think you're good. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to message me. And hope you have a great day. Show us what you make.